Inflation persists. How the Fed could move gold in 2024. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Insights brought to you by Ainsley Bullion and the Gold and Silver Standard. Today, we welcome back Sam, who's been taking a look at the Australian inflation numbers that came in yesterday and what they could mean for potentially a Melbourne Cup Day um, rates decision, as well as uncertainty around what the Fed is likely to do over in the US. So how are you going today, Sam? Good, Chris. Good to see you again. Yeah, good to see you. Lots happening in this rate space. Um, we've seen sort of really increased uncertainty in the markets. That We've got this FOMC meeting scheduled for um, October 31, so a bit of a Halloween um, sort of discussion going on there. If they talk about hiking and getting aggressive, would this be bad for gold? What, what's your take on this? Um, not necessarily, because gold does do well in situations where things are economically falling apart. And it could be at the stage now where people just don't know where to put their money. If you look at a lot of these, um, the so-called PowerPoint businesses, which are falling apart, really all they're surviving off is easy liquidity, you know, where they can they can take out these huge loans or get uh, huge investments from from people with extra liquidity. All this stuff's falling apart, and it becomes really apparent. It's it's really hard to find somewhere to put your money and. Even if you look at the S and P 500 or the S and P seven, as some people are calling it now, um, it's it's not looking so good. So we have gotten used to the post 2020 situation where, rather than dollars just being a vehicle to move capital between the stock market and gold, the you know the dollars have just been burned and sacrificed so that both mm -hmm. the stock market and gold can go up so the vehicle itself is is on fire and everything's going up but recently that's changing around uh, a little bit and you know both aren't just guaranteed to go up from from that easy liquidity and uh, gold's been kind of clawing back especially with two hot wars going on it's safe haven status and that, that's a really interesting point, um, that this correlation isn't the norm. We don't usually see all of these things necessarily going up together. And that's a really good point that we might be at this point, at this sort of juncture where we start to see that break down a little bit and return to what we would consider historical um, correlations that would normally play out. So do you think that, I mean, there's really analysts, there appear to be a lot of analysts out there saying that we could have these high rates all the way through 2024. Do we see these correlations going on until then? Is is this possible that we see those high rates continuing all that time? How? What's your take on that angle of it? I think it's a fantasy. Um, uh, it would it would be my guess that you would say the same, <laughs> that it's a well, fantasy. Yeah, that that's they... absolutely what I think, yeah. So holding rates high through 2024, I, I wonder when we went from black to white. You know, when people are saying, oh, there's going to be a pivot every month of this year, they're going to pivot this month. Oh, they're just, they're just bluffing. They're going to pivot right away and save everything to now saying, oh, what if, what, what about November next year? Like, where did that come from? One, how is the debt going to be serviceable? Two, we had that data come out from September about the spending being the worst this year. How much worse can that get with another year? It just doesn't look sustainable. I think people would be, you know, rioting in the streets for the the government and the Fed to do something and bring liquidity back. And and that's a really good point. We were talking. Um, I was talking with Alex about this on Monday, where uh, or Tuesday, I think it was, where she was saying there were these models that were predicting out to twenty fifty, and I said, you know, they'd be lucky if they could get it right to the end of twenty twenty three, let alone <laughs> out that far. Um, and absolutely what you just said, to have every week it was pivot, 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 and now it's like hold. It, it, these models just make no sense in, in this environment at all. I don't really think it's, um, it's, it's gotten a bit, bit ridiculous, to be honest. Um, I, I Also, there's another factor that's really important in this, and I noticed you commented on it in the news today around the US elections as well, because if you've got the Fed ultimately... Um, needing to make some of these actions, like we both think, as as we just highlighted, don't they usually want to keep things calm during the election cycle? Do you, is that going to be the case here in twenty twenty four? Is something different this time? Because that's that's traditionally been the way they've played it. Well, they can try. I mean, it's it's close as everyone's saying, but it's about a year off. I mean, we're looking at November twenty twenty four. And the stock market's looking pretty scary. So I don't know if they can just suspend the stock market until the election's <laughs> over and everything looks fine. Uh, in, in my 
you know, personal opinion, it, it might be easier to just instigate a crash now. Some people think that's what might be happening. Mm -hmm. And then pivot and let liquidity loose and then get a recovery around the time of the, the election and, and make everything look good. Uh, that would also mean that the Fed would be technically in cahoots with the current administration in in some regard, uh, which, you know, I can't really speculate on, but it will be interesting to see what happens. But yeah, staying out of the market and avoiding interfering, well, they already have. So I don't I don't know if there's a way they can prevent already the interest rate hikes they did from affecting uh, the next year of what's going to happen to markets. And that's such a that's such a good point. I hadn't really thought about it specifically through that lens of, and I, I know we're just wildly speculating here, but potential manipulation because I tend to think those that that timing lines up nicely with what the liquidity cycle was expected to do anyway. But when you add that element that that potentially um, you want that crash sooner, that's really that is an interesting point because it does make sense that you don't want to be in the crash part of it right when you're trying to um, campaign for election. That that bit makes a lot of sense to me. And we might say it's a year out, but you know when do they start really heavily campaigning on this? And you've seen from the 2020 crash, most people don't remember it. Yes. You know, there are people uh, I mention all the time. People say, well. You know, this analyst, that analyst, they're a doom and gloomer. They've been calling for a crash for 10 years and there hasn't been one. And I say, really? What about what about 2020? And they say, what crash? Well, <laughs> you, you just can't, you have to keep your eyes open. And if something happens that fast, some people just don't notice it. They don't notice the loss. They don't notice the opportunity either. That that's And that's a really good point as well, because we've seen a lot of that recently where people just have recency bias and they can only remember well, they're lucky to remember more than six months ago, let alone you know years ago. But yeah, very good points. So just changing slightly from that to looking at it more from a technical angle, um, you often look at the charts. I mean, I look at the charts as well. That they tend to tell us a little bit more about what's going on, or we might not know the specific reason, but we can often see what's happening beneath the surface by looking at the charts. So, what are the charts telling you at the moment? Well, as far as uh, gold against the Australian dollar is going, it's kind of hard to do charting because it's it's um, literally uncharted territory. It's uh, it's all new, so it's a bit easier now to look at U.S. dollar. So looking at gold against the U.S. dollar, and you can see that still there's a long way to go if it's going to do a retest of a major resistance level that it's it's been um, bouncing off the last three years. That's about $85 US increase in the price of gold per ounce. Mm. So that's a, a long way for gold to go, just to retest where it's been bouncing off of for the last three years. And on that point as well, why is it just consolidating for three years if you know, inflation does inflation is so rampant and everything like that. It seems like every time it's gotten up to a peak, we've had this story about uh, a stimulus that was supposed to go through but didn't go through, or some reason for uh, gold to go back down. But it it has been consolidating for three years. So um, when maybe hmm. maybe not if, but maybe when is that going to break out of that? Um, that major resistance level. And that I think um, could lead to quite a substantial breakout when it happens, because the flip side of something staying in a very tight range for a long period of time often tends to be that the breakout is proportionally um, violent, I suppose, to the amount of yeah. time that's been sitting there. Is that how you read it as well? Yeah, exactly. So it, it does look heavily, heavily consolidated. And it's it's not been just kind of moving sideways it's been getting knocked down really really hard for apparently no reason because hmm. you can go to the grocery store and see that um inflation's not really gone anywhere um at, at least in regard to us consumers yeah well it certainly hasn't gone anywhere in the downward direction anyway <laughs> that's that's um for sure and everyone would agree with that one i think so Thanks so much for that today, Sam. Um, a really, really good look across the markets there. We'll keep an eye out for um, what words we start to get as we approach that, because it, it is Melbourne Cup Day here, isn't it? The uh, next rate decision. Yeah, and it looks like um, it looks like it'll potentially be a hike because of our uh, worse than expected inflation data.
and and I think that will really catch people off guard as well because mm-hmm. I, I don't think people were suspecting um expecting that at this stage. So we'll certainly be paying attention for that one. So thank you for that. Thanks, Chris. Thanks everyone for watching. Remember, if you've got any questions or comments, reach out on those social platforms. That's us for today and that's us for this week. We'll be back on Tuesday with Alex to discuss all things markets and metals. Until then, have a great rest of the week and weekend, everyone.